Because of the following CBS News special report, the CBS Late Movie will begin one half hour from now at 12 o'clock Eastern and 11 o'clock Central Time. What do you say, stretch your foot and pass them? Our next meeting will be on the ground. With a final goodbye, the astronauts of Apollo and the cosmonauts of Soyuz ended their historic meeting in space. The hatch is closed on two days of a Soviet-American harmony in space that has escaped the two nations on Earth. Apollo and Soyuz still are joined together and will remain so overnight. Still one spacecraft in orbit, but their crews will not see each other again in space. They undock tomorrow and proceed to their separate conclusions of the mission. I know Alexei as my brother. We all got a job to do. We've got to work together to do it right. And uh, I think we're all going to be working together to do that. Cooperation means uh, friendship. Friendship means peace. This is a CBS News special report. Apollo Soyuz, a meeting in space. This broadcast is sponsored by Lum's Restaurants all over America. Lum's, no one else will give you more. And by Johnson Wax, makers of Shout, the heavy-duty stain remover specially made to get the tough stains out. What would you do if your son stole home and most of the dirt around it? I'd shout it out. What would you do for a really tough stain like motor oil? I'd shout it out. Introducing Shout, the new heavy-duty stain remover. Shout, specially made to get the tough stains out. What would you do if your daughter mixed up a real mess? I'd shout it out. Want a tough stain out? Shout it out. This is a professional exterminator. He's on every can of professional strength raid to tell you that inside you get the same tough ant and roach killer many professional exterminators use. A powerful professional strength bug killer, tough enough to stop crawling bugs right in their tracks. Look for the pro on professional strength raid ant and roach killer. It's the toughest raid we've ever made. Good evening. This last day of working side by side in space for the crews of Apollo and Soyuz was a busy one. Americans and Russians shuttling back and forth, conducting medical and scientific experiments, eating one another's meals, participating in ceremonies of detente. And since the propaganda of detente was an important consideration, television cameras beamed much of the activity to Earth. U.S. space officials had seen a lot of Soyuz, of course, but when cosmonaut Valery Kubasov gave astronaut Vance Brand a guided tour, the world got its first close look at the Soyuz spacecraft, almost as cramped as America's early Mercury space capsule. Welcome into Soyuz. The third hatch uh, is used uh, for transfer from the descent vehicle. There are small folding desks in the orbital Uh, we are used 
During the tour, Kibasov also showed the visiting Apollo astronauts some of the things he took with him on his journey into space. Hey, by the way, if you're looking, uh, Bo, there's uh, Valeri's family, his wife, uh, Ludmilla, and uh, two children, daughter, son. Let's see, it's Kat. Say, Roger, we can see Ludmilla and Katya. Uh, Ludmilla and Katya. Dimitri, yeah, that's it. Uh, the, the boy, uh, the youngest, uh, is Dimitri. Good looking family, huh? Roger, we can see them here on the TV. Kubasov's guided tour of the Soyuz spaceship wound up with a guided tour of his homeland. With a television camera aimed out a window, the cosmonaut told Brand about the nation passing 140 miles beneath them. Okay, Bo, uh, I think uh, we're about ready to go here. Looks like we're coming up over the Black Sea. And uh, right now, Valerian's getting in position. Got a little bit of a jetty in the cabin here. We're going to keep open court. He's uh, ready to tell you a little about his uh, homeland here. The Soviet Union, a very big country. Okay, Valeri, uh, please uh, go ahead. There is nothing more beautiful than our blue planet. You will enjoy the sight of it together with us, and we shall help you explain in what flows below the spacecraft. The path of the two spaceships during the tour took them over the Central Asia landing area for Monday's touchdown of the Soyuz and over the historic city of Stalingrad. Of our country, rich in natural resources. 
getting a good picture here. We can see the clouds in the mountains pass below. You might tell where we've been enjoying it. Then the Soyuz crew was given an aerial tour, but they were not as fortunate as the American tourists as clouds obscured their trip up the east coast of the United States. They began over Florida, site of the Apollo launch, and then to the Carolinas, okay, site of another uh, famous launch. Uh, just have to return, yeah. Uh, it's in the middle of your Carolina. screen. We you're see you're North Carolina. Carolina. Uh, uh, only 72 years ago, the first airplane flew in this state. Yesterday, while the world watched the first meeting in space, somebody had to mind the store. And that somebody was Brandt who stayed at the controls of Apollo while his two crewmates and the Russians swapped ceremonial gifts. So today, it was Brand's turn. So we have a very cool play here with the Soyuz spacecraft. I can ask that Soyuz is a good spacecraft. Gravity rise, uh, job at the value of a dollar BG. Well, this is my first time in orbit. And we have found very good hospitality here aboard the Soyuz. For you to remember uh, your stay here, I would like to present to you from the Soviet, the Russian people. The medal of the Soyuz and Apollo. Now you, would, you can be able to see it on your screen. The same kind of medal was uh, presented yesterday to Stafford and Deke Slate yesterday. And today I am presenting this medal to Vance Brand. Um, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. We will return in a minute with more on the meeting in space. So people are spending a lot of money eating out. <laughs> You get it? Oh, gosh, I feel like the cruise director on the Titanic. <laughs> but seriously, folks, that's why more families are coming to Lums. More for your money, variety, like great steaks, seafood dinners, deliciously different hamburgers. Lums has everything. Any pie? <laughs> Do we have pie? <laughs> Lums, no one else will give you more. Take a walk, take a walk. Walk on over to Wilders. Walk on over to Sunshine. Walk on over to Good Good Times. Walk on over to Wilders. Wilders, America's favorite lemonade mix, has been selected by NASA to refresh the astronauts on the Apollo Soyuz mission. Walk on over to Good Good Times. Walk on over to Wilders. Altogether today, there were three transfers of crewmen between Apollo and Soyuz. The busy activity looked like an orbiting version of the Marx Brothers. And one writer called it shuttle diplomacy. Here, cosmonaut Leonov returns to Soyuz as astronaut Brand prepares to head back to Apollo. And it gets a little crowded. So, Ready to open hatch three. The rendezvous in space began with a symbolic handshake between the commanders of the two spacecraft, Tom Stafford and Alexei Leonov. It approached its end as they exchanged seeds of evergreens to be planted upon return to Earth and fitted together their mission medallion. 
allow me to present to you, on behalf of the United States of America, to give your people and your government a present of the United States, a present to your people. After Stafford gave Leonov some seeds, Leonov gave Stafford the other half of a commemorative medal that he had received at the beginning of their Apollo-Soyuz program. Good evening, dear television friends. It's 2200 hours in Moscow time. The terminating final activities are going on on board our two spacecraft. While they circled the globe, the spacemen held a joint news conference, answering questions submitted by reporters at the Mission Control Centers in Houston and Moscow. The session opened with a statement from Apollo Commander Tom Stafford. It's been a most rewarding two days here in space, working with the Apollo Soyuz project. The success of the mission that both the United States, the Soviet Union, and the rest of the world has seen as a result of the determination, the cooperation, and the efforts by the governments of the two countries, by the managers, and engineers, and all the workers involved, it's been a very rewarding experience. Yesterday, when I first opened the hatch and said hello to Valeri and Alexei, I had a couple of thoughts. However, due to communications, we could not talk to them directly. The thoughts were, that when we opened this hatch in space, we were opening back on the Earth a new era in the history of man. I would have said, Akra Vayu et Luke Pekosmosha, we Akra Vayu Nazimlai, Novayu Eru, the Historic Chilaveka. How this new era will go depends on the determination, the commitment, and the faith of both the peoples of both countries out of the world. I'm sure that it will work out in the future for good. Valeria Kupin, to the next question to Valeria Kubasov. You have children. What would you like to wish to them from space as well as to all the children of the world? Well, of course, we would like to wish happiness to all children so that their future would be a good one so that this, their future would be a peaceful one, so that they would always live with their parents and uh, in happiness, so that they would never lose their fathers and brothers as occurred during the last war. I would like to wish to all the children who are now alive, who now live on the earth, the majority of them are school children, now they're on vacation. I would like to wish them a good vacation so that they would gather their strength for the upcoming studies in school. And one more question to Alexei Leonov. Could you transmit to Earth a sketch that would depict the meaning, the essence of your, of the joint mission in space of your two spacecraft? Well, it's probably quite difficult to do this uh, very quickly right now, but I could transmit uh, this drawing. This drawing was made a long time ago. This image. Excellent, thank you. As far as the question is to say, I have done many drawings here. For example, here's Tom Stafford. Does he look like him? Very much. Very excellent. Thoughtful. Now I'll show you a very complete, a very young Stafford. Here he is, uh, younger. Excellent. Exceptional. And one other person from Texas. This is our friend, Dick Slayton. 
Brenda, я только сейчас ему подарил, когда But, uh, the portrait of uh, Van Brand, I just gave it to him and he's not here. So you see, here's a whole, whole cosmic uh, portrait gallery in space. And I'd like to say that it's, the spacecraft is one thing, but another thing is with whom you're flying. And I, this is what I'd like to point out, that I'd always want to fly in space with friends to whom one trusts and who trust in one and with whom it is not dull to work with. While the spacemen share the perils of flight through a hostile environment high above the Earth, on the ground, halfway around the world from each other, the families of the cosmonauts and the astronauts share similar concerns, similar emotions. Nelson Benton reports from Houston, Steve Young from Moscow. You know, when the, right after docking and uh, the odor was detected from the docking module, did, did that give you any pause at all? A little concern. Um but when they mentioned the masks and uh, that they were reluctant to put them on, I thought, oh, it's all right. <laughs> yeah. After Tom comes down from this, should uh, Tom Stafford fly again? <laughs> I, I said on Apollo 10 he shouldn't, so I'm not going to make any more profound statements about what Tom should do. <laughs> He'll make a good decision, I'm sure. For, for me more, it's strictly a personal kind of thing. No, it, I know the value of the flight and the things that hopefully it will accomplish in working together. But again, I think it's hard maybe for other people to realize the feeling that you've actually accomplished what you've worked for for all these years. And I feel like I've worked for it as hard as fans, not as hard as he has. But, you know, we've been married a long, long time and, and we've gone through a lot of things together. And I feel like it's as much a a triumph for both of us because he finally accomplished the thing that he had worked so hard for. Mrs. Kubasov, were you worried uh, during the rendezvous and docking? Of course I worried. It's a natural feeling to uh, be anxious about your close ones who are very in a very responsible and a difficult role at the moment. We watched both the launch and the docking together with Lyudmila in our apartment. We, we had the wives of other cosmonauts were with us at the time, cosmonauts, Soviet cosmonauts, and we watched the TV transmissions with them. Naturally, every space flight has a certain experimental nature, and it's well known that each flight has a certain amount of risk, so there's a lot of worry of, among relatives and close friends. So we were very worried at the time. But along with this worry and anxiety, we were we are never never without hope and confidence in the successful conclusion of this flight. And I think in general, space. As was said earlier, space is only um, conquered by the brave. Uh, that's the way we feel our husbands. That's the kind of people we think our husbands are. Four of the five spacemen's wives also have their own careers. Mrs. Leonov's a teacher and editor. Mrs. Kubasov's a research engineer. Mrs. Stafford is co-owner of a specialty shop. And Mrs. Brand's a decorator for a home building firm. The Russian press, for the first time watching and reporting uh, one of their own space adventures as it happened, has put banner headlines on the Apollo-Soyuz mission, and TASS reports that a Soviet couple named their newborn twins Apollo and Soyuz. The parents are Sidimkin and Tarakbai Satyvaidev. The cosmonauts will come back home uh, Monday uh, with their Soyuz parachuting to the steppes of Central Asia. Apollo stays up three days longer before splashing down in the Pacific near Hawaii Thursday afternoon. Take a walk, take a walk, walk on over to Wilders, walk on over to Sunshine, walk on over to Good Good Times, walk on over to Weiler's, America's favorite lemonade mix, has been selected by NASA to refresh the astronauts on the Apollo Soyuz mission. Walk on over to good, good times. Walk 
I love the Ali burger. Don't nobody move until I get my bacon burger. All Lums burgers are cooked to order. All choice beef. <laughs> Maybe Lums will name one after me. Say you already have, Mr. Burrow. That's why they're called hamburgers. Lums, no one else will give you more. Tomorrow morning, Soyuz and Apollo will undock for a test, then rejoin and finally separate, eventually to drift slowly out of sight of each other. The handshake flight, the first joint venture of the United States and the Soviet Union, then will be over. The basic purpose will have been accomplished, a demonstration of detente with the whole world watching. Where will it lead? Well, who knows? But for this one mission in space, the two world powers have shown they can work together no matter how great the background of suspicion or how much their political and economic systems remain in conflict on Earth. The cost has been questioned, $225 million to the United States and about the same for the Soviet Union. And both nations certainly have problems on Earth demanding their resources. But if one believes in man's destiny ever to explore the unknown corners of his universe, to seek answers to questions he's been asking since he first looked up into the heavens, then even more costly commitments are going to be required. The flight of Apollo and Soyuz was a first step toward man's abandonment of his earthly competition in an effort to share the cost of adventures into space. For the moment, the United States is suspending that effort. This was the last scheduled flight until the first tests, four or five years away, of the space shuttle, a whole new generation of space vehicles. The Russians will use those years to build bigger boosters and more sophisticated spacecraft, closing the gap that now exists between their capabilities and those of the United States. This flight did not end the space race, but it may have paved the way for more cooperation, less competition in the future for the benefit of all mankind. This is Walter Cronkite, CBS News, New York. We're going to prove that Edge lets you shave closer than the leading foam. First, listen to an unshaven face using an ordinary credit card. Now we'll shave the left side with foam, the right with Edge. With Edge's protective lubrication, we pressed harder to shave closer than foam. Now listen to the foam side. Then listen to the Edge side. Foam. Edge. Edge lets you shave closer than the leading foam. Herb, I bought an air conditioner. An air conditioner? Not that kind of air conditioner. This kind. New Glade Solid Air Freshener. Conditions the air and gets rid of odors. How do you plug it in? You don't, Herb. It's an air freshener. Glade Solid. See this ventilation system? Works continuously, so the air smells fresh and clean. Fits in the window? It's not an air conditioner, air conditioner. It's an air conditioner! Oh, really? New Glade Solid. Eliminates odors and conditions the air. This has been a CBS News special report. Apollo Soyuz, a meeting in space. This broadcast was sponsored by Johnson Wax, makers of new Glade Solid Air Freshener, and by Weiler Foods, Borden Incorporated, makers of Weiler soft drink mixes. That's three is open. Okay, you might tell an old emission now. I just happened to check the roll index angle that we put on, you know, between the command module and the docking module. Roger. Yeah. <laughs> In other words, the zero line is... This is CBS.